I, I'm old. One thing at a time is my limit, I think. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so um, the reason I uh, decided to do this presentation is because I believe that we need to venture out into new areas. We need to be create. We need to uh, uh, walk the talk, and uh, we need to take risks. And so this is uh, one of those presentations where you'll find, hey, I, you could have said this or that. Great. Do, I, I advise you, please do this presentation yourself ten times better next time. I'll attend your session. <laughs> but the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, I will try to insert some humor, and if you don't smile at me, please fake a smile. <clears throat> All right. I'm so glad to have some of my students here that are supporting me. By the way, uh, so I do uh, want to sell a little bit of the, just for a second. Uh, one of the greatest transformational experiences you can have in life is to do a master's in Buffalo, New York. Okay, so that's in creative studies and change leadership. And, uh, and I will put uh, our master's here in Texas M as second. Okay. Uh, and then I also do teach a creativity minor here, but four subjects. But um, it is the teaching of the class for graduate students on motivation and learning that drove me to have this presentation. So I'm going to uh, start sharing and I'm going to go, as is my style, about that's not the thing. That's Guernica. All right, stop. Let's try again. <laughs> Please. Get it done. Do you see the Do you see the creativity motivation thing? Slides? No, because I, yes. that's what I see. Yes, we do. Yes. We do. We see it. Oh, okay. Because I have two screens, and sometimes I get just confused. All Me right. Too. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, this is the double confusion here. All right. Now, do you see? Okay. I'm just believing that you see it. Oh, the this uh, uh, creativity motivation. So why this? The first thing I want to ask you is just put on the chat, what is your definition of motivation? Quickly, your own definition, so then you can make some connections from where you are at. I'll give you about 10 seconds. Uh, just write the definition, and I need to see the chat number moving upwards. All right. Thank you for contributing. You can continue. And yes, even as you continue, for those who have written something, you can look into those definitions and try to cluster them in your mind into two sections. Which one is the cognitive side? It is as a cognitive definition is about thinking. And what is the emotional side? This is about emotions. OK. So then you can see, OK, it seems to be going one way or another. I don't know because I'm not looking at them because I have to present. All right. So. Uh, the reason or reasons why this is just uh, definitions from um, different dictionaries and Wikipedia and, and basically what people go use reason or reasons to act for acting in a particular way or, or willingness. So they give you two definitions. One of them is more um, cognitive. The other one is more emotional. That's a clever way to do it. I, f I congratulate those who came up with that idea. Uh, now, one of the interesting things about uh, motivation is that uh, it could be, to begin with, a misnomer. And uh, let me explain to you why. Because the root uh, word in motivation is motive. And motive means that you have a reason. And reason means that you have a thought behind it. So usually, uh, we don't come up with, uh, why, when people ask us, why did you do that? What was your motivation? I just felt like doing it. So we don't share that to many very often, even though that could be really the case. So there are different, you can look into Maslow, different uh, uh, reasons that we can, that can drive us to do things. But what I'm going to talk to you about, and by the way, how long do I have? So I think it's 20 minutes, but I've used so much, so much, so I was going to time myself. Okay. I will, uh, do you want a five minute warning? Yeah. Okay. That's a great thing. So uh, the challenge is to bring some of these uh, components together. And by the way, this is not a comprehensive, you can add on to this. Um, so that, that, I don't know, maybe 20 different um, motivational theories. The ones that I want to talk to you about is uh, the expectancy value from by Eccles and self-determination by, by Desi and Ryan. But then you do also have uh, some other. And, uh, and as you can see, even goal orientation, 
mean, there's, there, there are a lot of very direct connections you can make with creative thinking. Creativity research. Uh, so again, she said me hi, uh, Amabile. These are two, some of the names that you may want to look into if you want to uh, go into this direction. And but then uh, it doesn't matter, doesn't mean that uh, the people that talk about creativity or research it may be using creative thinking tools because that's another story. To what extent creative problem solving, lateral thinking, sixteen hats, and maybe another ten different methodologies can help you develop. Uh, motivation, uh, creative mindset, and and thinking skills behind that you tend to develop when you use the tools. So one of the things that um, um, led me to do to this presentation is called um, uh, being irritated, and ir internal irritation and getting pissed off at certain things. Now let me explain to you. I just don't kind of take it when people teach creativity, but themselves they don't show creativity. I get irritated when people uh, teach motivation, but they don't know how to motivate themselves or how to motivate others. I find that that is pathetic with a letter with a capital P, and that is what drives me to teach this class. Now, well, how do I do it? It's by injecting creative thinking tools to people that they can use in order to realize that in fact, by doing this, they become more motivated. So, um, I'm going to go into the content uh, one step deeper, and then I'll give you about two or three insights from the tools. Okay, so is this impossible or possible? There's some um, areas of the expectancy value uh, system or earth mythology. One of them is self belief, self belief in future success and personal value or interesting in interest in what you are doing. Now, expectations of success, you will have these when you have clear goals, so concept, meaning uh, uh, you have a good impression of your capacity, or I'm able to do this, which in fact is also connected overlapping with self-efficacy and task difficulty, meaning what you perceive this to be. Is this going to be very difficult or easy if you think it's going to be very difficult, perceived, not real? then you're going to be less motivated. And uh, if you perceive um, it to be easy, then it's, you're going to be more motivated to do it. Uh, the insight around that is that the moment you see your experience as a learning point, because we don't get good at everything overnight, if you see your experience as a learning point, a learning activity, you will, by definition, feel motivated. Why? It's because you see extra meaning in your experience and you learn. Okay. Task value, perceived and not actual, four elements, intrinsic around interest, extrinsic, it is useful for me for certain practical reasons, attainment, affirmation of self-concept, meaning that I feel good about who I am by doing this, this is who I am, by the way, and opportunity cost, meaning that I'm able to say no to other things and put a sacrifice there so that, that I, I, I can value this more. Basically, you have to sometimes say no to other things in order to do whatever you really want to do. So what? So we can read uh, books and books on this. Excellent. This all makes sense and get some examples, etc. But so what? what? So what? What can we connect here with creativity? Let's move on. Dun. So one of the things that I want to tell you is that uh, um, some of the things I've been telling you about, they, in fact, these are acquired skills. So planning, making plans, scheduling, people talk about time management, some people say self-management in time, uh, really just, uh, and by the way, one of the interesting uh, tools that Tracker uh, um, uses in order for you to become better with the use of your time is having a time audit. And a time audit is where you write down what you spend your time. So today you spend two hours doing that, one hour doing that, just keep track of your time. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the week, you say, is that, is that, are there any changes I can make? Instead of trying to change the future, change the past. And planning, the whole thing is about planning. There's a skill, discovery of creative abilities and capacity is connected with that because at the end of the day, as I was saying, if you don't recognize you're good at something, um, 
you need to get some awareness there. Number one. Number two, that's uh, even if you can only come up with five ideas now, if you try these tools and you continue to ask yourself different ways of doing things, in one month you can come up with ten. In other words, you will improve your capacity to come up with creative ideas. That's something that is very much experienced when you get into Buffalo, the master's program, because they get you to do things nonstop. Identifying true difficulty by doing things. What I mean by that is that uh, if you have, I mentioned that before, learning attitude, but it, it's more than that. It's a prototyping attitude, meaning I recognize this is imperfect, but I'm going to make it perfect. That's a different thing. So it's connected with learning, but again, you are more realistic, saying, um, maybe I didn't get the whole thing here, but I'm going to try it because I'm going to see if the usefulness of this product or service, or whatever, is really transferred or accepted or appreciated by other people, then I can refine my idea through experience. So using a prototyping attitude will help you uh, get a true uh, um, sense of the difficulty of things. If you have tried something for one month and you think, well, to be, to really to be very good at this is going to be too difficult, but well, you can drop it. But if you try five things and you cling on to one, maybe that could bring you success to your life. My point is this, we don't try enough things because it's only by trying you can get, and then talking to other people, hey, how, how do you do this that you got so good at it so quickly? And they can give you some wisdom. That also. So task value. Uh, so what I suggest for people is if you really want to connect uh, uh, motivational theory uh, to a practice of creativity, just start asking questions and use how my guy. OK, so um, these are places where you can motivate yourself by finding meaning, finding min meaningfulness and not waiting for someone to give it to you. So how might I become more passionate about the subject? That could be an intrinsic reasons. How can I create meaningful value in this subject? This is just for learning. You could have it for business. How might I celebrate gradual improvements by doing this? How might I gain a sense of achievement through gradual progress? As you can see, only this only these questions to try to find one answer to this question already gets me motivated. I want to do this. How might I learn to sacrifice other things to do this? For those who are interested, going to cognitive dissonance, and they talk a little bit as well about sacrifice, okay? That area that uh, when you say no to something, that means that you value that much more because of the because of yeah, what you are leaving behind. Okay, so let me go on to self-determination theory. So here we're talking about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And Ryan and Desi, what they say is that the extrinsic is not really that uh, super important unless you make it intrinsic. But there are ways to internalize and integrate, those are words they use, these intrinsic, intrinsic values into intrinsic values. Uh, five minutes, of, Hector. Uh, thank you. Five, feeling, uh, five uh, feelings of competence, autonomy, and relatedness are uh, key issues. So I'm going to go into uh, relatedness. Uh, basically, what I've noticed is that either 16 hats created from solving, when you facilitate this process, people feel part of something. And we don't give it enough value to that, that uh, people feel connected to a group that is making, bringing change, that's making something happen. And so creative problem solving, the facilitation of creative problem solving is by itself as a social structure, mental structure or methodology, a motivating. It's if you have a decent facilitator that is appreciating people. I have to say that. Uh, so the competence, creativity um, will help you to understand, to apply and to reflect and improve. Now, one of the things that I've heard this morning at the talk that he was given is that reflection of, on, of experience will help you become more creative. So, but you have to do that as well. You have to help people to reflect creatively. That, and that is uh, one, uh, subject or things that I've been I've been working into to help my students become a bit more insightful in the way they learn things through reflection. Okay, so always looking for more reasons or things that they will do different next time for reasons why something worked or didn't work, etc. Uh, journaling is very uh, useful in that area and just looking for good prompts. 
And the other thing is autonomy. And autonomy is the, in, the opportunity to control your actions. Creative thinking helps you to become more proactive in instead of reactive. So of course, the, mo the moment you start becoming more creative, you will find you will feel you'll be more motivated. Now, some of the tools that I have used in my classroom are webbing and three parts, by the way. Uh, so one of them is asking the why, what, what's stopping you, what else is stopping you, or even asking how, and rephrasing in questions. Now, most of you, if you have taken a creativity class, you know about this. Otherwise, you can find it in some of the literature by Gerard Pucho and, uh, and, and and looking at, around into some of the creative thinking tools for creative problem solving. Um, the key thing here is that the moment you ask the right question, and is the right is right for you, the most appropriate question for you, the most meaningful question for you, that is going to motivate you. And that's why I put, I also put word dance, which is not part of this list, but word dance helps you get to find the right word. So I include that into the motivational tools for my students because they find out that when they come up with the right, the most appropriate question for them, they have a desire to do something. Now, problem, uh, PPCO is the evaluation of ideas. And when you look into the positive sides of an idea and you look into what uh, potential, what it can be in the future, what this can become in the future, again, you feel more motivated, I want to do this. And then if you want to go to the details, because very often what people will come ask with something very abstract. So I tell, ask them, so how are you going to do that? And they tell me this, it's still abstract. But how are you going to do that? It's still. So you ask that question how five times, eventually you have to come up with something that you can implement tomorrow or maybe next month. But it's something tangible, measurable. And that's how this works. I put five tools in one semester. People are equipped to motivate people. Just do uh, so. So one of the things that I want to leave you with is that uh, um, creative thinking is the um, may not be the only way to go about motivation. And it seems that uh, when you do something, you are engaging in um, motivation, meaning that the doing is by doing that you feel motivated. You don't feel motivated to do. So what I ask people is try something new, even though you don't feel like doing it. And when you do it, see how you feel about doing it again. So actions may change you more than your words but again you need to have a way to process the experience uh, like for instance i have included games in my classroom so some of these people things that go well is that people start thinking about applications of of games to increase creative thinking and i have included a layer to do that but some of the downside is that some of the students they just get more involved in the game than the learning <laughs> so i have to I have to uh, find a way how my action, because I'm taking risks, nobody has done this before, how my action is going to help them by um, pushing them to think around the experience and try it different times. You need to start somewhere. Uh, so start in the easiest place that you find. And make it easy to begin with. So this is just some advice. Well, don't make it too complicated. And then you, because why do you want to make something too complicated? Then you don't feel motivated because you couldn't do it. Make it easy <laughs> and be ready to learn. All right. And I'm, and I think that I'm more or less uh, done with my time. But uh, how long do I have? 30 seconds? 50 About seconds? That. Yeah. 50 seconds. Yes. <laughs> All right. I have to celebrate this thing because uh, I'm not sure. I'm not used to 20 minutes of, I, I'm used to two hours, but I didn't want to <laughs> put you through that. That's a joke. All right. So here are the seven ways to, to mot stay motivated. But what I want to tell you is that I believe motivation is a byproduct of creative thinking. So everyone who wants to engage in this, if you share it, you are going to, it's, it's going to be like contagious. You can motivate others by sharing how you felt motivated by trying something different, something you thought through and, and the sharing of stories, I believe that it will make an impact. Now, I'm just came, I'm going to give you one very small thing that uh, is extrinsic motivation, by the way, but I had to do it. I told I told my students, the winner of this game, I'm going to give you some money. And they were saying, yes, thank you, thank you. OK, yeah, and then I told them, it's going to be an amazingly a small amount. OK, but they still wanted it. <laughs> so I, I asked them, the winners, I asked them for the Venmo, and one of them, I gave them, I gave him $2.51, and they want $2.52. And that is because I wanted to create an experience, a memory of an experience that was positive to them. And now I am done. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Hector. That's great. 
Uh, I'm going to ask people to uh, put comments and questions in the chat. We've got another group that's going to be coming in, but if you want to quickly ask a question while others are coming in, I'm going to stop the recording so that I can record the next one. <laughs>